Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking grid effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels at around about 10 seconds in duration. Just press OK. Once we've got that, we need to create a new solid, which is going to be our background. So we're going to call it background. And then we need to look for an effect called fill. So once I've got fill, I can drag it into my background layer. Now I'm going to change the color and I'm going to change it to a darkish kind of blackish kind of blue. You can change it to any color you want. Dark colors work well. The next thing that we have to do is we have to create another new solid and I'm going to call this one fractal noise. All right. And you can already guess what effect we are going to use in here. I'm going to search for the fractal noise effect. So I'm just going to double click on that. Now we need to change a few of the settings. So I'm going to bump up the contrast to about 1300. I'm going to change the brightness up to about seven and I'm going to reduce the complexity down to about four. Then what I need to do is make sure that the playhead is at zero and I need to come over here to my evolution settings. I need to click on the stopwatch, move to the end of the timeline and then just set that to one and that will give it some animation. So you can see when I scrub through here, you can see that there is a little bit of movement which is happening and that's looking pretty good. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to create our grid layer. So I'm going to create a new solid and I'm going to call it grid. Now on this grid, we need to come over here and toggle switches until you can see this 3D layer here. We need to make it a 3D layer. And then what we are going to do is we're going to open up the transform settings. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to the X rotation and I'm going to change this to 300. And then I'm going to press P for position and I'm going to change this uh, final column to negative 100. And then I'm going to also change the Y to let's say 300. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press S for scale and I'm just going to make it bigger until it fits the entire composition. So now I've got a nice grid layer which will fit over the composition that we have. So now what we need to do is we need to search for another effect which is called grid and I'm just going to double click that and drag it into my timeline. Now once I've got grid I need to come over here and change the width and height sliders and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to let's say maybe 70 uh, and 70 and I'm going to change the border to let's say around about three and so if you've done that correctly, you can see now the grid is appearing in between that fractal noise. So now what we need to do is I need to come back over here and toggle switches and I need to go to the matte settings and I need to change the fractal noise to an alpha matte. And now you can see that all of that stuff is now going inside of that grid. And now you've got this like really cool effect, which is like kind of bubbling up and bubbling down. So that's looking pretty cool. So now we need to dress it up a bit. The first thing we need to do is we need to come over here and create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to make sure that that's at the top and I'm just going to rename this blur. So the effect that I'm going to put on on this uh, adjustment layer is directional blur. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the direction to let's say 60 uh, degrees and the blur length to 120 degrees. Now you've got these like, you know, cool little lines that um, appear on the actual composition. So what we need to do is we need to change the mode to add. And now if you've done that correctly, you can see that now we've got these lines that kind of appear in the middle of these, uh, you know, grid lines. So that's looking pretty good. So the next adjustment layer that we need to do is we need to create a glow. So I'm just going to add adjustment layer and I'm just going to write glow. So the effect that we are going to use on this is we're going to add a glow at a glow radius of 10. That's fine. But then we're going to double it up and we are going to change the glow radius to 30. And so now that gives a, the grid a really nice glow and that's looking pretty good. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to add another adjustment layer and this is for Lumetri color. All right. So I'll just write Lumetri and I'm going to come over here and search for the Lumetri color effect. 
So once you've got the Lumetri color effect, what you need to do is you want to come into your curve settings and you want to just create two points here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that over slightly and bring that one up slightly. So maybe just, just a touch, just so it looks like a little small S. And I think that's looking pretty good. Once we've got that, then we need to go back to our grid uh, layer and we need to search for this really wacky effect called CC Collider. And what we need to do is we are now going to change some of the settings on that CC Collider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to leave the size at 20 and the mirroring at flower. But then what I'm going to do for the rotation, I'm going to click on the stopwatch. I'm going to move to the end of my composition and then I'm just going to bring it up to, let's say 30. Now you can play around with some of these settings. The more intense that you make the rotation, the weird shapes that you'll get. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Maybe I'll bring this down to actually 20 and we'll see what that looks like. Now this is very CPU intensive. So if you have to preview it at um, quarter, you can see what the animation actually looks like. If not, you can just render it and uh, have a look at it then. So the final thing that we are going to add is we are going to add some tint on the grid layer. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to search for an effect called tint. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click the map uh, black two, and I'm just going to pick a like a still a darker blue, but maybe just a touch lighter. So you can play around with some of these settings to find something that you like and you can get the kind of the glow effect that you want. But I'm happy with something like that. So now that we've got our grid and it's animating and it's looking pretty cool and it's got some weird kaleidoscope thing happening, the final thing that we can do to this is to add a camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a camera, just press OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new null object and I'm going to link the camera to the null object. And so I'm going to make sure that I toggle switches and make sure that that null object is a 3D layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the Y rotation and I'm going to move it around slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it at probably about negative 25%. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate that by pressing on the stopwatch and then I'm going to bring it back down to, I don't know, maybe let's say 10. And so now when you preview that, all right, like let's go and put it on quarter so we can actually see what we're doing. So now we've got this cool camera rotation effect on our grid background and that's looking pretty good. So now you can leave it here if you want, or you can add some final adjustments, which is putting text on this layer over here. So we can do that by just um, going and right clicking new text layer, and then you can write grid. And then I'm going to change uh, my font. All right, I really like this font at the moment in Saini Burger. And you can change the color if you want to whatever you want. and. I'm just going to space it out a bit and then make sure that I align it to the center of my composition. And once you've done that, you can export that and that's it. So now you've got a really cool grid background and you know what else is pretty cool? You can pre-compose all of that stuff as well. And then what you can do is with the text layer, you can actually turn it into a track map where you've got the grid in the text as well. So anyways guys, that's a real quick tutorial on how to do this cool looking grid in After Effects. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.